What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the final week of JDC Season 3. I am stoked because it's Dealer's Choice Week, which means uh, you guys literally got to offer up any card you wanted that is legal and historic, and those were the cards that we had to choose from. We had to narrow that list down to, to, to eight. Uh, and let me just say, that was the hardest thing I think we've ever had to do because of how many cards were suggested this week. Blew it off the charts. We had a ton of people uh, take part in that one. I really appreciate all the suggestions. Don't worry. I know this season is over, but another season will be happening at some point in the near future. And so you will have the opportunity, if your card was not selected, uh, to be a part of the JDC. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's jump in. Looking at the pairings for this week, as well as who won and who lost last week. Doug and Rachel, let's talk about your game. What happened? Rachel, let's start with you. Alrighty, so um, I got destroyed <laughs> completely. <laughs> I don't think it was as bad as the luck I, the bad luck, let me say, I had when I originally went against Alex. Um, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have to mulligan down to two cards, you know. <laughs> That's an accomplishment, but I, Rachel. <laughs> I still lost terribly. Um, we even played four games, and I lost all of them. Oh no! But I Rachel. still think it was a lot of fun. I'm so glad you still had fun. I would have had a hard time having fun in that particular the circumstance, worms will rise but that's again. okay. Uh, so talk me through your deck. Uh, talk me through your pick. Talk me through why you built the deck that you built. That kind of stuff. Let's let's hear a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, so I had the impervious great worm, and um, my deck is very budget. So my stuff was the only real worms I had in there were impervious great worm. I had uh, Pelica Worm, um, and then I think I had Sandworm Convergence. <laughs> so those were like all like the big cards, and the biggest idea was that I did Naya, um, except, Kevin, I did take your advice. I put in Fling yes. for fun. As I had should. literally the only red card in there was Fling, <laughs> so I had four red mana. That's it. That's, um, that's enough. And that's then, all you need. <laughs> And then I kind of built it around this. It's not really a combo per se, like a normal combo. It's more about how many things can I trigger off of Impervious Great Worm. Um, so I had a bunch of Garruk's Uprising, which is obviously whenever a creature with power four graded to the battlefield, draw a card. Um, and then I also had um, Vivian, Monster's Advocate, which was you can do the negative, the down tick too which is whenever you cast your next card, um, you know, you may put a uh, creature with converter mana cost less um, onto the battlefield. And the big thing was to do was to be able to draw a card, was to be able to down tick um, as I'm putting her, or right before I put um, previous Great Worm down, and then to pull out uh, the Luminous Brood Moth so that <laughs> if it dies with Fling... Then he just comes back with flying, and then I could just ping it again if I needed to, if I had an extra fling in hand. Rachel, I love the ingenuity with that. You took the fling combo to a whole other level that just made you repeat the fling combo, which is amazing. That's perfect. That's exactly yes. what we were hoping for. It never happened, not even close, oh, because no. someone over here, we learned <laughs> that... Um, and, uh, um, Oh my god, Doug can easily agree that we learned about Nine Lies being stackable, which was horrendous, <laughs> because it became, I had to hit him 27 times oh to be gosh. able to get rid of the, uh, to even get rid of a single one, oh and no. then with two solemnities down, yeah, that Makes it became impossible. nearly impossible. Well, I Doug luckily got two Lights of Hope, though. Yeah, that was a smart idea. I did see that in your games, that you had that in your deck. I was like, all right, cool. That was that was a smart way. Um, well, Doug, I mean, we got to move over to you and talk about Nine Lives a little bit. Obviously, the combo is Solemnity and Nine Lives, which is such a great combo. It just makes makes it really tough to really finish the game on the opponent's end, as Rachel is, a, is attesting to here. But talk through the rest of your deck. Talk through, you know, your build-around stuff, but then obviously how everything else kind of built into that. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, yeah, the, the nine lives solemnity is kind of the the main combo, and that's the one I think everyone kind of expects going in with uh, that that card. Um, but you know, you still have to kind of find a way to win. And I looked at some other decks online, and a lot of people were doing like uh, 
just super grindy decks that basically would win with uh, like Approach of the Second Sun or <laughs> mill your opponent out with Teferi or whatever. I, was, I, I didn't quite want to go down that road. Um, but then I, I looked at a couple options. I looked at doing a, a more cat-focused theme with the Nine Lives uh, card. I was going to play the Blue-White Elemental Cat. And then there's this Jin card that was in Jumpstart. I forget its name. But it has this weird effect where if you like attack with four flying creatures, you can swap permanents with an opponent. <laughs> so I thought one of our uh, yeah one of our uh, act very active Discord members really likes uh, that card. Uh, it's yeah, the Jin, it's the Azorius, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's got like a, an ability to pump all your gems. I oh look it up while i'm talking this about this but we need to know the card uh, name it, and he has the gale force uh, so yeah. I, I don't know where it originated from or if jumpstart was the first printing of it maybe <laughs> uh it's a very weird card but i thought well maybe i can donate the the nine lives um but i i played around with that bit a little, a little bit i just I, I wasn't too particularly happy with how it was working and uh so then I, I thought, well, if it's combo week, like, you know, what, what combos can I do? And someone on my Discord mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, the, if you're already playing Solemnity, um, that it, it pairs pretty well with the brood, uh, Luminous Brood Moth. Yeah. Um, so that one, so when you get a, if a creature dies, it comes back with a flying counter. Well, with Solemnity, you can't put counters on it. So if something dies, it just comes back. <laughs> Um, so That's that kind so of triggered mean, the, <laughs> the <laughs> that, that was the, the start of the, I mean, that was the start of the additional combos. So I think I had the, uh, the what, fanatical firebrand croaks, uh, and plague crafter could all <laughs> essentially cycle infinitely to either deal damage or discard and kill creatures. And then I threw in the veto and uh was it revival Reve yeah revival revenge i threw that combo in just as like its own kind of separate third Dude, you, or fourth combo you went above and beyond this was supposed <laughs> to be a combo not seven like what is uh... this? <laughs> <laughs> well obviously it worked though i mean as rachel mentioned uh, s fairly sadly rachel i was rooting for you but uh obviously you were able to win last week that puts you at an undefeated record in jdc season three um and it also means you're up against rachel again for finals week so you guys are duking it out for first uh who's gonna win it i'm i'm excited do we have any trash talk to to throw back and forth on either end i just would uh... like to be able to take you down once that <laughs> Just once. Even if I only win one game, even if I don't win this, can I beat you at least in one? <laughs> Doug, I'm starting to think you're too good for the JDC, and it's a little scary. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> all I can say is I, I can I can barely contain my, my hate for Hydras at this point, so <laughs> you better be ready because it's coming. <laughs> oh, I love it. Awesome. Well, I wish you both the best of luck. Uh, do keep in mind the draft picks, obviously, that we'll talk about here in a bit. But, Alex, we got to talk about our game, buddy. What Dude. was the deck? What was the card that you drafted? What did you What you build? I got to pull up. I got to pull up the deck. I've been looking at. I've been looking at a different card. <laughs> uh, so, like, I had, uh, you know, not as many options, but I went with Bulls of Citadel. Uh, I I initially, for those who didn't watch the game, I'll spoil just one one thing. Uh, my initial idea that I that I even praised about last week uh, was not not even possible. I mean, I could have done it; it just would have not turned out very great at all. <laughs> uh, I initially wanted to go bulls to Citadel and approach to the second sun as my game winning combo, but as that doesn't work, does it? Yeah, it does not. As people, <laughs> as people who have played Magic as much as I have should know, uh, as you should read the card, and then typically uh, it'll tell you how it works. And I, for some reason, just didn't do that with approach. But thankfully, my 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 good old my good old Mons uh, uh, talks me talks me through it, and we we create a deck 
That didn't go infinite. There was no infinite combos, but there was just a a, a big storm picture. <clears throat> we need to drink something. One moment. <laughs> well, Dog and I, I will attest to the fact that I was very worried because Bullets of Citadel was actually at the top of my list, as Alex, you and I kind of talked about. Um, when we first started our game, Bolus' Citadel is such a powerful card. Lots of really great things you can do with it. Um, and in talking about your deck, I know we were we both both came to the same conclusion that your deck was awesome. It just did not go off like it was meant to. Now you did still win one game. You won the first one. Yes, that's true. I won, I won the game pre pre. Now, granted, I didn't have a sideboard, but uh, I did, uh, yeah. and mine was mean because I had a lot of hate. That did oh. work with my deck, I will say. We we talked about this, especially in week one when it was enchantments week. We couldn't just have, you know, a million disenchants for for the enchantments week. That's a little unfair. But if things did synergize with your deck, then it made sense to have them. Uh, and so the way that I kind of went about this was a lot of my hate uh, was focused more on creatures because I did take Nethroy. And so my my point was I was going to be self-milling. I was going to be probably losing a lot of creatures along the way and then being able to bring them all back in with Nethroy and then all of a sudden just sweep, you know, a Citadel off the board or whatever I needed to do was kind of the plan uh, for yeah. the sideboard side of things. I, ha I had, I think main deck, I had a few like, you know, Thoughtseize effects. I think I had six in total because I had like four Divest and then two Thoughtseize. Uh, as options to peel some stuff out of the hand, but other than that, I had like very little interaction. <laughs> um, I, as I have, I've I've actually had very little interaction in almost every deck that I've been playing this season, which might be why I've lost so much. But um, I uh, I was pretty proud of the Nethroid deck. It was a really fun one. Uh, the combo with mine uh, was to bring back uh, a Yara along with a Zoni. And then have things like Yarok on the field, which doubled up on all of the ETB effects. And then all of a sudden, I just would drain for tons and tons of life. Um, and in practice, it did work. It didn't technically... That combo didn't technically happen when Alex, you, and I played. But I did get some Nethroids off and actually get a few things to, to kind of work. Uh, which was really fun. And I, I loved playing with Nethroid. I think that was my first time that I'd really delved deep into that deck. Uh, but Alex had a great time playing against you. I beat you, and I'm happy about it. Yeah, hey, there you go. Finally, I've won one. <laughs> you did it. Uh, um, but you and I are going to be duking it out this week once again uh, to fight for third place. So uh, I do wish you the best of luck, but also I'm going to try and kill you. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Let's move on, guys, to the draft. Uh, so like I said, this was dealer's choice. Uh, I did try and pick a bit of a variety. Um, the bears can't go two and two. Oh, sad day. Very true. Oh, what missed opportunity, Doug. You should have thrown the last game. How dare you? <laughs> I ruined it. Darn it. God, you're the worst. Um, <laughs> no, it, no, how about this? Uh, whoever wins, uh, whoever has the, the best creature score by the end of the season actually wins. So Yeah, well, that's not bad. <laughs> I, know, um, I just uh, died to state-based effects currently, so not, not very yeah. exciting. I just, <laughs> just, uh, oh, I can see. Well... And looking at these picks, like I said, uh, <laughs> jumping into these draft picks for this week, we had a ton of options that were suggested. I tried to pick a bit of a variety. You'll see we've got one of each color. We've got artifacts represented, and then we've got uh, two gold cards here as options. Um, this is an interesting group of cards. We can clearly see there is the Brushwag, uh, thanks to... I believe it was Don and like 50 other people that said, hey, we need Brushwag in here. Um, There's two of them that were named like a ton of times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we did take a, you know, we, we took a look at it and this is what we came up with here. So there are a lot of different options. We've got High Alert, we've got Zakama, we've got Terror of the Peaks, got Omniscience. Doug, I'm looking at you because I'm guessing that's going to be a pick on your list. Uh, we've got the Brushwag. Uh, God Pharaoh's Gift, Revel in Riches, and then Lyra Dawnbringer. Uh, now, the draft order for this week. I am actually up first. Then we will be following that up with the Bears. So, Doug, you are on deck. We've got Hydras. Rachel, you'll be after that. And then Alex with the Humans rounding mm. us out for the evening. Uh, really excited about this. I I'll go ahead and jump in and say that I've already built my deck. I already know what card I'm picking. 
Uh, but I will say it was a tough one because there are a lot of good options in my opinion. Um, Brushwag kind of was on the list. Not going to lie. I had a deck around it. It works, but I didn't pick it. Uh, Omniscience was on the list. Absolutely. That is just a crazy, crazy good card. Uh, and then actually Zakama and High Alert were both cards that I was really interested in uh, for multiple reasons, most of which the High Alert deck is just a really fun kind of walls list. Um, but Zakama is just stupid powerful, so there's a lot of options there. But in the end, I went with Terror of the Peaks uh, for a very particular reason, which you guys will see when we have our gameplay. Rachel, are, you, you look a little... I don't know if that's happy or sad or... <laughs> Is this happening? <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I assumed you were going to choose Terror of the Peaks. Okay. You you were correct. I, I have chosen Terror of the Peaks. Uh, and I, <laughs> I'm very excited. I love the deck that I've got built around it. It's a mashup of kind of two ideas, which I, I hope will work uh, against you in particular, Alex. And, and obviously, we'll see that as we go through. But uh, that's my draft pick out of the way. Doug, you're up next, man. What are you thinking? Oh man, I I have no idea this week. I uh, I feel like every card has uh, some potential options for me. I will say the omniscience I actually kind of crossed off my list early, just because I felt like I, I did one with it earlier. You know, I mean, it wasn't the the main card, but I didn't want to necessarily feel like okay, I'm you know always on omniscience. I, I figured I should try to mix it up a bit, so. Okay, I, uh, I respect that, Doug. That's pretty awesome. I will say Terror of the Peaks is pretty high on my, my list of potential picks. Um, I, there's a lot of fun things you can do with that card for sure, so I'm, I'm a little sad to see it go, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, I, it maybe it's for the best. Um, oh, this is really hard. Uh, I'm going to admit, like, I think every one of these cards has potential. Even uh, the brush I, I really Doug. I'm actually, you know, it's, you mentioned that, and I look, because I was looking here, I don't see any bears. There, there's no bear <laughs> options. But when I look at the brushwag, I feel like the brushwag is like the brother of the bear. You know, it's like, Hashtag it may be... for anybody that remembers yeah. that movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude, I, I, can, I can take you on a series of separation. How about, so a brushwag kind of looks like a porcupine badger thing. Looks like a Badger, hedgehog. hedgehog, sure, um, <laughs> but they're kind of like miniature bears. <laughs> I'm with it. I see I it. I see it. it. You pop it once, and it's just kind of like two bears, and the, you know, badgers or hedgehogs or all those animals are basically twice as ferocious as a normal normal. Bear. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but, Doug, is this yeah. is this you picking the brushwag, or is this you just considering the brushwag? I mean. I think I, I just I look at that list of cards and I can't think of another card that fits bears better. Oh, and I figure the nice thing with the brushwag is you look at all these other decks, you kind of know to some extent what you're doing, right? You pick the brushwag, it could be anything. <laughs> you have no idea what's coming at you with the brushwag. So you know what? I, I think that's it. Yep, I'm I'm locking it in. Oh, duh. Bears and Brushwags BFFs for life. Oh God, I am so happy you did that, Doug. <laughs> I can't wait to see an, a, a a Google Google Brushwag swing it. Oh my Rachel. God, <laughs> Doug, please share your list before you and Rachel play because I just want to see which direction you went, and I'm really excited because oh, I have no idea at this point. <laughs> oh, I definitely... I'm gonna give you something. <laughs> As the enemy, I want you to have Colossification in there. Yeah, oh, I want to. I want to. Ha I want to see the chance of a twenty. Was it? It could be a twenty-three, twenty-three brushwag coming in, hitting me. Dude, it's oh, it's Gruel Storm Herald with brushwag. That's all you need. That's it. Oh god, you've got this. Oh, I just, Doug. I just want so you. To, I don't want. To, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, uh, that means Terror of the Peaks and Brushwag have been picked. Um, <laughs> clearly the two uh, best cards. The two best cards, clearly. Uh, yeah. Rachel, that means you are up. Let's talk through your picks. What are you thinking? You know, I'm feeling good. My first and second pick were not taken. Wow. 
I thought brush oh. was for sure everybody's first, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh... Yeah, totally. Like, how could I not want to choose the almighty brush I mean, kind of, yeah. <laughs> no, I hate the card. <laughs> Whoa. It's going to be great to crush it. Oh, I wish you Whoa. luck, Rachel. That's some fighting I'm words. I'm <laughs> feeling a little bit more confident Wait a minute, now. wait a minute. No, you do you. the bears, but it, I don't know. I... I don't know that anybody can stand up to the almighty brushwag. He is almighty. I think, you know what I think? I think angels can. Oh, we're going Dawnbringer. Yes, I am. Oh, Thanks what a good to part. my girlfriend who has enlightened me of the power of angels and Abzan angels even. Wow. Okay. I see you. Well, I'm we're going to be testing that out a bit. It was either going to be that or high alert because, you know, how could I not resist the how could I resist the chance to do a seventeen seventeen crab? <laughs> that um, is very hard to pass up. I will freely admit. I did it, it and it was a mistake. <laughs> mm -hmm. And while I do love Zakama, you know, my heart goes to um, dinosaurs, big, big creatures. You know, I just, I'm not feeling Zakama, honestly. I I'm really enough. not. I am I am really excited to see what you've got for this Abzan Angels deck. Are you locking it in as Abzan, or is that just an option for you? That is definitely where I'm going to see, like, I'm going to test out a deck with that. Okay. Because I have seen this in person on, for Commander. Yeah. Um, and I want to see if I can translate it. If not, I'm willing to move it around. Um, but, yeah. It's okay. definitely going to be a lot of Angels shenanigans. I like it. Rachel, I wish you the best of luck. Angels are very, very good. There are a lot of historic options that are super strong with it as well. So I, I'm excited to see if the Almighty Brushwag can beat the Angels. I love the thematic play of of Angels versus the Almighty. I don't know why, <laughs> but that's really exciting to me. <laughs> I do want to point out that Rachel did dish the Brushwag, and I'm not saying who I'm rooting for, but yeah, right. laughed at the Brushwag is a that's... common hunter's expression, meaning died <laughs> i have not no 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 the difference between laughing at it and dissing it see it's not that i particularly hate the brush i particularly i just think that styling going for him he needs a new haircut oh that's it that's all it is it's yeah. particularly just that's the not his hair haircut. that's his home you're dissing right now <laughs> oh, but man. he needs a new look he needs to look a little bit better than angry renovation. Dude. You're not getting almighty brushwags. You're getting the angry brushwags now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I can't wait to watch y'all's match. This is going to be a great time. Uh, well, okay. I wish you both the very best of luck uh, with your respective decks. I'm excited to see what you come up with. Uh, Alex, we're moving on to you. Uh, obviously, I've picked Terror of the Peaks, so what are you, what are you picking to counter that? I So, uh, as usual, I talked to Mons about what what we should do and if it was just up to me i know what i would pick in my heart of hearts i would pick big mom as a comma <laughs> uh, but you know i'm not just playing for me uh so i had some discussion and, and the comma was on that list but it was a card actually on my list higher than that that wasn't even touched uh of course my number one was picked uh the almighty brush bag it's gone <laughs> Uh, the, you know, the best card there. Uh, clearly, clearly the ones me and Mons discussed uh, that had to be our number one. No, uh, sorry. <laughs> our number one pick wasn't even touched. It was Revel in Riches, actually. Revel in Riches. Okay. That's uh, interesting. Nobody picked Zakama. I'm very surprised. So, why Revel in Riches? So, it's not that we wanted to stay uh, with, you know, the giant mono black en enchantment slash artifact thing. Um... There's, it's not that we had a bunch of, it's not that we had a, a specific idea of what we wanted to do, it's that we could do a lot with Revel and Riches. Uh, so you're trying to stay open is what you're saying? Yes. We, 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 since we were last pick, we wanted to pick, we wanted to add four things that we could basically do whatever with. Okay. Just in case. Yeah. No, I think that's smart. Um, well, do you have any idea of which direction you want to go with the Revel and Riches? Oh, now that I know that there there is a Revel in Riches, like not not that there is, not that it's <laughs> open. Um, I don't know if I want to. I'm either going with a little Mimi, 
Yeah. And just putting in every card that says Revel in it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I have a little bit of a. You have a better, a bigger strategy going on. I see. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a, a big, 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 big brain. Well, don't spoil it for me, because I, I want to be surprised when we go off uh, and and fight our match. But uh, I'm excited to see what you did. That is not what I expected you to pick at all. Um, I, I also am very surprised. Seriously, nobody picked Zakama. <laughs> like, that was like on my list as like number one or two until I built my deck with Terror of the Peaks and was like, okay, no, this is it. But, like, that was very high on my list. I'm so surprised uh, that well, nobody picked it. For ours, it was Revel and Riches, Zakama, and then uh, God Pharaoh's Gift, actually. I thought God Pharaoh's Gift might be a, an interesting pick for you in particular, just because I know you've probably got a lot of, uh, of, of ideas for the God Pharaoh's Gift, we'll say. But, um... I I definitely thought Zakama was going to be at least on your list for sure, just because of the the EDH layout that you tend to have. Um, but either way, I love it. Revel in riches, man. I wish you the best of luck. I am going to try and beat you uh, with my big swingy fly boy. Oh, I'm very worried about that. Uh, you should be. Um, I'm just saying my deck is pretty fun, so I'm excited. <laughs> uh, is Plummet in this format? <laughs> It is, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, if I'm oh, that's yeah. it. interesting. Um, <laughs> all right, well, guys, draft picks have been solidified for the final week of JDC season three. This has been a tremendous season. I really do want to thank uh, not only to the viewers who have uh, kind of been taking part in the draft, but also in uh, in just the the gameplay side of things and hanging out with us as we've been playing throughout the weeks. But I really want to thank everybody here for playing. Uh, Doug, Alex, and Rachel, you guys have been fantastic. Uh, absolutely excited to see how this last week goes, and I wish everybody the best of luck. Why, thank you. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to do it for this evening's live stream. Uh, we are still kind of debating on if we'll be able to do a Monday evening stream next week uh, to, to kind of wrap things up and do some final thoughts and things like that, but... Uh, whether we do or not, we will let you know in our Discord, but I do appreciate it again, everybody hanging out with us throughout the weeks. And uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned for games as we figure out times and things like that. We'll share that as well. So.